Hi, thank you for viewing my presentation. My name is Gene Arkenberg. I'm the Director of Stack and Systems Technology for Nexaris' Fuel Cell Business Unit. In the following slides, I'll provide an update on our project titled Compact, Lightweight, Power Dense, Integrated Fuel Cell System. This effort was sponsored by PMA 263, the Navy and Marine Corps Small Tactical Unmanned Air Systems Team. Our SBIR number is N181-013. Before we get into the project, I'd like to first provide a little bit of background on Nexaris. We were founded in 1994 with the vision to create a better world through energy innovations. Our location is in Lewis Center, Ohio, which is just north of Columbus. We are privately held and have 60 full-time team members working at our facility. We are a technology developer of advanced ceramics, such as solid oxide fuel cells, or SOC for short, and electrochemical devices. A product developer of sensors, fuel cells, and catalysts, and a manufacturer of sensors, fuel cells, and related products. A few of our commercial products are SOC materials and components and coatings to support the fuel cell industry, hydrogen safety sensors and alarms, and lithium ion battery safety monitor called the Lion Tamer, which can provide an early warning of up to 30 minutes of an impending battery failure. This allows the user plenty of time to take mitigating action before this failure occurs. We are ISO 9001-2015 certified which covers all of our operations from R&D through manufacturing. The Navy has some energy action goals, which this project looks to help address. Uh, these are as follows, developing more efficient systems, reducing greenhouse emissions, eliminating and reducing fossil fuel usage, increasing the use of alternative green energy sources in the fleet, and future power sources must extend operational range and lower maintenance cycles. The system that we're designing hopefully can address the majority of these items shown here and to achieve the, Na the Navy's energy action goals. A quote from Ray Mabus, former Secretary of the Navy, inspired us along the way. We're gonna be using American produced, American energy that will create jobs in the United States, will create a far more secure source of energy for us and will make us better environmental stewards because we will be contributing less to climate change and burning much cleaner fuel. This is directly related to what we're working on here, and hopefully that the IFCS that we developed on this project will help meet these goals. Current military-based power systems use combustion engines that operate on petroleum fuels. However, the combustion process has a low fuel-to-power conversion efficiency, which can be as low as 15%, resulting in high fuel consumption and harmful gas emissions. Batteries do offer an attractive alternative energy source where space claim limitations prohibit the use of combustion engines. However, the typical low energy density, less than 200 watt hours per kilogram, prevents the widespread use of battery power sources as primary movers, especially for aircraft. The demand for power is only gonna increase in the future. And therefore, we see the future warfighter needs are gonna have longer mission durations and a wider range of CONOPs for unmanned systems, better power sources that use existing logistic fuel infrastructure, ease of getting more power deeper into the field, and quiet power for silent watch missions. Solid oxide fuel cells have many desirable attributes for a wide range of military applications. This technology can provide a path for the following. Longer mission durations, larger payloads, and operation on military logistic fuel for unmanned aerial systems, silent, efficient, and robust power sources that operate on JP-8 for military ground vehicles, small, lightweight, and efficient power sources that are required for exoskeletons, unmanned ground vehicles, and battery chargers. There are many favorable attributes of our stack and system technology, which are well suited for military applications. These can be broken down into four pillars. Number one, lightweight. Our high power density stack and hotbox favorably increases the power to weight ratio to enable lightweight power systems. The second pillar is high efficiency. Nexaris' flex cell technology, stack design, and operational modes allow for very high efficiency, which in turn helps to reduce the overall fuel that's being consumed and increase mission duration. Design flexibility. Our approach to cell and stack fabrication, coupled with our system design experience, allows us to customize our technology to meet the requirements of many systems, even though these designs can be divergent in their ultimate needs. And finally, sulfur tolerance. The use of logistic fuels demands that power systems be tolerant to sulfur. This requirement eliminates most fuel cell technologies. However, Nexaris' cell and stack technology has been proven to be able to operate on reformed JP-8 
with sulfur levels of up to 1,000 ppm by weight in the liquid fuel, which is nominally 100 ppm after reformation. These attributes have established Nexeris as a world-leading innovator in SOFC technology. Before I discuss our current status, I'd like to first provide a brief history on Nexeris's SOFC technology. As I mentioned earlier, we were founded in 1994 to develop SOFC materials. In the year 2000, we established FuelCellMaterials.com as our commercial arm to sell products to the fuel cell industry. A few years later, we invented and patented a highly efficient fuel cell technology, which we call the Flex Cell. This technology became the core of our military intent stack design that we began to develop in 2006. The choice to pursue military applications steered our development to focus on systems which use sulfur-containing logistic fuels. Thus, in 2007, we developed an electrode set for the Flex Cell capable of stable operation on sulfur-containing Reformate. This technology was scaled up and demonstrated five years later in a stack operating on Reform JP8 with 300 ppm of sulfur by weight within the liquid fuel. Our focus then shifted to meeting the requirements of our lightweight systems, which in turn led us to establish a new high-powered NC stack design in 2015. In 2019, we performed multiple TRL Level 4 breadboard system demonstrations with our high-powered density stack integrated with a few different type of logistic reformers. During 2020, the focus of our Navy Phase 2 was to design and demonstrate a TRL 5 system which incorporated a heat exchanger, reformer, and our stack design. While not shown in early 2021, we were able to achieve the TRL 5 demonstration by operating a thermally self-sustaining mode with multiple start and stop cycles. Our journey is depicted by the progression of pictures shown at the bottom of this slide, where we started off with the SOFC materials, which moved into the planar cells. The planar cells then became SOFC stacks. The stacks were then integrated into breadboard systems, and those breadboard systems were then converted into integrated fuel cell systems. The primary outcome of this Phase 2 SBIR project was the advancement of Nexeris's SOFC stack and system technology from TRL 4 to 5. As I mentioned on the previous slide, in 2019, on an Air Force-sponsored project, we demonstrated our high-powered NC stack integrated with various reformers in a breadboard. A picture of the demonstration system is shown in the upper left-hand corner of this slide. Following the fuel line, we'll start to the right of this picture, which shows a reformer, in this case an autothermal reformer, which was then used to convert logistic fuel into reformate, which was then sent through a series of valves, which enabled the coupling and decoupling of the stack and reformer. This reformate was then heated by a fuel heater before entering the stack. Finally, air was being fed to an air heater, which was then sent to the stack. The stack in this system is being operated, being supplied by, hot, by only hot reacting gases. This demonstration advanced our high-powered NC stack slash system technology to a TRL level four. Now, a picture of the integrated fuel cell system, which we worked on on this project, is shown in the picture in the bottom right-hand corner of the slide. In this instance, the stack, the CPOX reformer, and heat exchanger are all integrated into a single hotbox, drastically simplifying down the overall system and the reducing the volume significantly and the footprint of the previous breadboard. This system was demonstrated with thermally self-sustained operation without any supplemental electrical input. It was also able to demonstrate multiple start and stop cycles with the unique attribute of a stagnant shutdown, uh, defining this by we're not having any fuel or air supplied to the system or the stack while we were doing the cool down of the cycle. This IFCS system was able to achieve a TRL-05 via these demonstration tests. Nexeris's fuel cell stack technology is also being evaluated at the Army's Ground Vehicle Systems Center. Prior to this effort and an Army-sponsored project, my team worked with GVSC's fuel cell team to replicate our hotbox testing capability at the G-Spell facility in Warren, Michigan. This test bed can evaluate Nexeris's high-power density stacks in the power range of 500 watts to 5 kilowatts. My team regularly delivers stacks to the Army, and we regularly provide testing support when needed. To date, we've delivered four stacks for evaluation, one of which is still on test. And we have plans to deliver integrated fuel cell systems starting in 2022. I'll now discuss the key features, advantages, and benefits of our technology. One of the key enabling features is our tolerance to sulfur. 
The advantage is that this enables the use of military logistic fuel, such as JP5 or JP8. The benefit is that the use of these common fuels does not disrupt the existing supply chain. The next feature is high power density. The advantage it provides is lighter weight systems that enable increased payload and or portability for the warfighter. And our benefit here is increased comps. The last feature is our high fuel efficiency, which provides the advantage of increased mission durations. This also provides the benefit of increased comps. The fuel cell system requirements to which we designed the IFCS system are provided in the following table. Starting with the fuel requirement, our target was JP8. Our approach was to leverage our sulfur tolerant cell and stack technology and to work with partners on fuel processing technology capable of reforming the logistic fuel. The second specification was maximum altitude. Our target was 19,000 feet above sea level. To meet this, we designed our stack to minimize the need for cooling air. We also utilized some unique configurations to boost the overall efficiency. Next was the operating temperature, which had the range of negative 40 to 71 Celsius. Our approach was to optimize the design of the system thermal integration and also design it in a way that could handle the extremes of the temperature operational range. An efficiency target of greater than 30% for the 500 watt system was the next requirement. Here we sized the stack and reformer for maximum efficiency at this power level and minimize parasitic losses to the extent possible. The fifth requirement was gravimetric power density of 100 to 150 watts per kilogram. Here, we leverage our high power density stack design capable of power densities of up to 500 watts per kilogram at the stack. We also collaborated with performer and heat exchanger partners to reduce the weight of these unit operations and the BOP to the extent possible. Finally, the last requirement was form factor, in which we had to have a path to scale the system from 500 watts to 10 kilowatts. To meet this need, we leveraged our experience with stack and system design, along with our various larger scale stack platforms, which leverage the same core design features. This provides a path to easily applying the key learnings from the 500 watt system to a 10 kilowatt system, just by looking at the design features that are similar. Ultimately, this does require collaboration with military primes, who are the platform owners who would ultimately field these systems. The transition to fleet plan and vision that we have is laid out here in this table, which I'll describe to you now. TR level three, our goal was to achieve this by 2019. Our milestone was validation testing of cells and stacks, and we were able to do this within our phase one SBIR program. This did allow us to move into the phase two of this project in which we targeted TR level four. Our goal was in the year 2020, and we did this through system integration testing. TR level five, our target was to achieve this in 2021, which we did early on this year. And this was thermally integrated system testing. Our goal was to test it at NAVAIR. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we were not able to do that delivery yet, but we did do the validation testing and were able to prove thermally self-sustained operation at Nexaris with multiple start and stop cycles, uh, which we were able to hit the TR level five in the timeframe provided. Looking forward, TR level six, we envision this occurring in 2022 uh, through field testing on a UAS platform. Uh, this ultimately will need a follow-on funding uh, in a form of either a phase three or a phase two plus uh, to advance the technology kit to get it there. We then would see that two years later, we could get to TR level seven as the prototype system is demonstrated in the field and uh, further confidence is built in that. Additional funding again, with either phase two or phase three would facilitate that. And then finally, we could see a TR level eight occurring in the year 2026 where a production intent prototype would be demonstrated and this would allow us a clear path to getting towards the TR level nine and ultimate manufacturing of the system. The compact lightweight power dense integrated fuel cell system developed on this phase two project can be configured to support a wide array of military applications. Nexaris' stack and system design can be modified to support air independent operations such as power for unmanned underwater vehicles. The system packaging can also be configured for use in exoskeletons to support the warfighter in the field. Our lightweight system can be utilized for manned portable military gensets. It also can be scaled up to meet the demands for ground vehicle applications, such as the Bradley, Abrams tank, or unmanned systems. Finally, the system as designed in this project and discussed in this presentation can be used as a power source for unmanned aerial vehicles. If you would like to discuss how our system and stack technology could be a solution for your application, please feel free to contact me.
My information is provided on the last slide of this presentation. The transition approach and partnerships needed are covered on this slide. Nexeris plans to manufacture the SOFC stack and system and collaborate on the system implementation. Partnerships that we need are balance of plant component providers, uh, companies that can provide liquid phase desulfurizers, risers, logistic fuel reformers, lightweight heat exchangers, advanced thermal insulation materials. All of these will help us to further reduce the weight and increase the efficiency of the system. Battery technology partners, uh, all these systems are gonna require hybridization for the operation uh, for both support startup and shutdown. And so we would look towards battery partners to help with this. Uh, JDA partners, uh, so looking for companies who are interested in the acceleration of our technology readiness and manufacturing readiness levels uh, with the ultimate view of getting this to commercialization. And then finally, platform owners. Uh, we would be looking for opportunities for prototype testing and future technology deployment for various military applications. If you would like further information on our system or would like to discuss potential applications or partnerships for it, please feel free to contact me or Scott Schwartz. I'd like to take this time to thank our project monitors from NAVAIR, Mike Melnick and Adam Jolly for their guidance and support on this effort. And finally, I'd like to thank you for your attention to this presentation. And I look forward to hearing from you and to see how we can help you with your application.